let's talk about scientific notation. The reason that we have scientific notation is when we have really, really big numbers with lots of zeros, or really, really small numbers and lots of zeros, we can write it in a neat little package. So let's see, do you recognize this number? 300 billion meters per second. So what is that? That's actually the speed of light. Now how about this number? 753 trillionth of a kilogram. Do you happen to know what that is? That's actually the mass of a dust particle. Can you, can you imagine if every time Carl Sagan was writing the speed of light, he had to write this huge number? Nope. So that's why we have scientific notation. So scientific notation is written as a number, just one number, times 10 to the n. Okay? The c is called a coefficient. 10 is your base, and that's the same for any exponential function. And n is your exponent. And that tells us how many places we're going to move to the left or to the right. So let me show you how that's going to work. So let's change the speed of light, first of all, into scientific notation. Now remember, scientific notation is c times 10 to the n. Now c has our decimal place here. And we only get one number before the decimal place in scientific notation. So that means instead of the decimal being here, it needs to be here. So to start out, I'm going to have 3.0 times 10. Now I need to figure out how many places did it move. The easiest way is just to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 10 to the 8th. And that's how we, we would write the speed of light in scientific notation. So let's look at the mass of a dust particle. How would we write that in scientific notation? Now remember, we have the number and then a decimal point. So we need to write it as 7.53. But the decimal is actually right here. So we need to count how many places it's going to move. So it's going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 places. So that's times 10 to the negative 10. Now did you notice that this one's a positive exponent and this one's a negative exponent? The reason is is that this is a very very big number and we're actually this means times 10 times 10 times 10 eight times. That makes it a big number. This one is a negative number because it's actually a very small number. This means I'm actually multiplying by 1 over 10 times 1 over 10, times 1 over 10, 10 times. Another way to remember it, and this is how I remember it, is if I have to move my decimal place to the left, it's going to be a positive exponent. If I have to move my decimal place to the right, it's going to be a negative exponent. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you change these into scientific notation. Now, if you'd like, you can actually put it on pause and do it, but I'm going to show you how to do it in just a second. Okay, so the answers are 4.5 times 10 to the 7th and 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Did you get that? Well, let's see how we would do it. If you did get this, you could just move right along through the video. So first of all, here's my number. So I know it's going to be 4.5 because remember, it's a number and then the decimal. Now in this number, my decimal place is here. So I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places times 10 to the 7th. Now remember, I'm moving to the left, so that makes a positive exponent. Well, let's look at this one. This, remember, it's a number and a decimal for our scientific notation. So I'm going to write 4.8. Now here's my decimal. I need to move it way over here. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So that gives me 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, if I move to the right, it's going to be a negative exponent. So let's look at one really big number. Do you happen to know what this number is? It's actually a 1 with 100 zeros. And you can go ahead and count them because I know they're all there. 
So what is this called? It's actually called a Google. Yep, just like Google, except spelled correctly, should we say. So how would we write that in scientific notation? Well, it's a one with a hundred zeros. So that we 1.0 times 10 to the hundred. Because if I counted these, if I started going one, two, three, four, I would have a hundred of them. And that's what it is. 1.0 times 10 to the hundred. Now, this one is pretty important that you write the zero after it. Some instructors will say you don't have to, but I like it, just so that I know that you understand where your decimal place is. And now this is where you need to go to your textbook and try some out for yourself.